You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. If we be homestead, we, we can't hear that. Oh, we can't play against big schools. And I'm trying to bring back the bell, three-peat it. We're just going to go in there, play how we play, and just do what we do. Being physical, putting it down their throat, the ball. It's about what we've talked about all summer, being humble, uh, being focused on a daily basis, and taking care of what we can take care of. This is the biggest game of the year, and we want them to prep like it's a, it's a playoff game. Oh, for whom doth the victory bell toll? Yes, after tonight, perhaps we'll have a better answer to that question, right? Because coming into week three, three teams in the SAC still undefeated, and two of them squaring off tonight, Colton Howard. Kicking off our week three coverage here on the Highlight Zone with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton. Yeah, that's right, Glenn. Bishop Lewers and Homestead not only getting respect in the SAC, but respect throughout the state of Indiana. The Knights ranked number one in the state's 2A pool. The Spartans ranked fourth in the state's 6A pool. Bishop Lewers at Homestead, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Lures with wins over Carroll and Wayne this season. Homestead with wins over Northrop and Concordia. That includes putting up 59 points last Friday night against the Cadets. This one did not lack the big plays. First quarter, tied at seven apiece. Carson Clark unloads this ball out to Antoine Lake down the field and number one takes it 62 yards and into the end zone to take a 14-7 lead. Homestead responding, now a 21-14 Lures lead in the second. Desmond Smith Jr. with the handoff, and he gone a 46-yard run for his third touchdown of the day. But the Knights winning the first half, up 28-21, and Brody Glenn gets out in space with room to run. Bye-bye. 42 yards later, he's in the end zone with 6.8 seconds to go till halftime. Lures now up by two touchdowns. Homestead narrows the gap in the third quarter to the fourth. Down by three, Homestead's person drills Clark. That's one of the hardest high school hits I've ever seen. Spartans take over on the fumble. Peyton Slavin, Homestead's quarterback, punches it in for the lead with eight minutes to play. Now 42-38, Spartans in control. Homestead now trying to put this one away, threatening to score again. But Evan Linker, what a dog, comes up with a huge interception with just over two minutes left to play in this ball game. Clock winding down now, under 20 seconds left to go, and Sir Hale, Dog runs it in for the game-winning score, and Bishop Lewis wins it 45-42. to 42. Uh, Motion's crazy. I seen the outside wide open, and I just took it. Emotions, they believed in me, and I, and I ain't going to take that for granted, so I, I ran it in, got the end zone for the team. Honestly, in my, uh, my mind, I feel like I just got lucky. Um, I, I feel like the quarterback made a bad throw, but we got the dub. That's all that matters. We got guts. We got guts. We got each other's back. We're brothers, right? Uh, we're never, never out of the game. Kids are never out of the game. You think Lures is happy? I think they are. Next up, Bishop Lures hosts Concordia next week while Homestead is at Bishop Dwanger. Glenn, back to you. All right, thank you, Colton. Last year, Carolyn Northside scored a combined 124 points in uh, a week three win by the Chargers. Would it be another offense explosion this time around between these two? Well, it would be for one side. Jeff Becker missed last week. He was back with a vengeance to Jamison Coverstone. He did not get covered there. 23 yard touchdown, and Carroll up 14 zip in the first. Second quarter. Carroll's D doing it. Dylan Bennett with a pick six, and it's 21 zip Carroll at Chambers Field. The Chargers weren't done. However, Tay Johnson going up the ladder with a nice reception there. That's a first down for the Legends, but a fumble would kill that drive. And then right before the half, Becker, one of his three TDs to Jaden Barkalo. It makes it 27-0 as Carroll goes on to win by a final of 40 to nothing. Snyder not lacking in excitement this season. The Panthers beat Northside by two in week one, then fell by one point last Friday to Carroll. The cardiac kids of the SAC taking on Concordia. First quarter, Amarion Moore channeling his inner Jesse Bates. He gets the pick, a nice return as well, and Snyder in business early in this one. On the ensuing possession, Luke Halpert swings it out to Kamari Juarez, and Juarez finds pay dirt. Snyder up early, 7-0. Concordia 
Trying to get something going as Snyder moves the football here. The ball pops out. It's kind of a hot potato there on the Zoller Stadium turf. Eventually, Tyler Mower would come up with it for the cadets. So that's good news for Mike Eschbach and company. But guess what? That Snyder defense looking real good tonight. Markel Keel, one of the more underrated players in the SAC, if you ask me. He picks it off, and Snyder wins at Concordia 45-13. Bishop Dwayne, you're looking to stay undefeated at Southside. The Saints ranked third in the state in 5A, and it's uh, Dwayne's favorite game show. Name that Tipman. Who is it? It's KJ Tipman with the touchdown, and that put Dwayne up 18 to 0 in the second quarter. Still in the second frame, Bodie Dickerson looking, finding Henry O'Keefe, and O'Keefe does the rest. Watch the fancy footwork as he cuts back right there at the end. That's a touchdown, and it's 25-0. Saints, they weren't done. We talked to you about the, the big hit belt. It generally comes on defense for Bishop Dwenger, but maybe it comes on offense this week. That, woo, that was Aziz Dixon running over dudes to get in the end zone as Dwenger improves to 3-0, and 50-13. After opening with Dwenger and Lures, Wayne looking to get on track. The Generals at Spooler Stadium against Northrop. First quarter action, fourth down a uh, pass broken up there by Rayshawn Boone. Boone had a nice pick last week. 0-0 after one. Second quarter, Roosevelt Northfleet hits C.J. Davis, and C.J. is okay. On the screen, he takes it to the house, and Northrop up 7-0. Wayne trying to get something going here offensively. Aiden Meek to Justin Alexander on third down, and he gets his helmet ripped off on that one. But you're going to see Wayne continue to move the football until this Meek picked off by Jaden Schmank and Northrop wins a tight one against the Generals. This one 13 to 12 Bruins over Wayne. So the SAC championship race continues to shake out, but outside the Summit City, conference play for most teams actually kicking off tonight. In the Northeast State, league play getting underway with undefeated Leo at unbeaten Norwell. In the ACAC, defending conference champ South Adams. They were bound for Bluffton. We got the highlights. And in the NECC, two proud programs colliding as Garrett hosts Churro Busco. All that and trips to East Noble, to Angola, to Warsaw, and more. We got 11 local games coming your way next in the zone. Let's go, Blazers! Better place to be tonight than the courtyard, right? Leo and Norwell both went 10 and 2 last season, both 2 and 0 this year, and both ranked in the top 10 of their respective class. For a number four, Leo at 3 8, number eight, Norwell picked this one up in the second quarter. Leo already starting to roll. Mason Sharon, how good is it to see this guy healthy this season? It's a touchdown, makes it 34 nil, Leo. You're going to see Norwell try to crank up the defense here to get back in it. The pass out to the flat. It's Drew Ringer with the interception, but Leo in control at half. Now, third quarter, more from the Leo offense. Ethan Crawford with the touchdown. A little John Cena in the face right there. 148 yards, three rushing touchdowns for Ethan Crawford. It was 41 zip Leo. Norwell gets on the board in the fourth of that John Colbert touchdown, but Leo sends out a statement to the rest of the Northeast State. Lions take it 41-7. Oh, it feels amazing. We've been, we've been training all week. We knew they'd be a physical team, but we're, we're just a very dominant physical team, and we knew if we played our game, we'd do amazing. Really a game about execution, and, and you know, we, we didn't make too many mistakes on either side of the ball, and, um, you know, defense, another great outing uh, for our guys on that side as well. After sitting out last week with school-wide COVID issues, East Noble back on the field. The Knights ranked sixth in 4A. They were hosting Huntington North. They didn't waste too much time getting on the scoreboard. In the first, Kanan Carrico. They get over 200 yards on the ground, and their opener adds 116 yards and two touchdowns in this one. That one went for 38 yards, seven zip. Now, Luke Amstutz going for the jugular, the onside kick in the first quarter. Are you kidding me? Who else recovers it but Mr. Carrico? 
Then East Noble goes to the air. Xander Brazel looking for Nick Munson, and this is a thing of beauty. Munson hauling in the touchdown. He's got great hands, and East Noble romps over the Vikings 57 to 13. To Bob Worthman Stadium, we got Belmont in Columbia City. The Eagles coming off a heartbreaker last week to Delta. First quarter action is Greg Bolt, the four-year starting quarterback. You don't hear that very often. He plunges it in from three yards out in Columbia City, leads 7-0. Then it's Columbia City. You saw the offense. They do it with defense here. Brock Ewer with the interception in the end zone to hold off the Belmont offense. Now, Belmont gets it going here offensively. Jamison Rumpel with a touchdown haul, 63 yards on the score, but Columbia City wins 62 to 35, most points scored by the Eagles in almost a decade. Final stop in the NEH, New Haven hosting DeKalb. The Bulldogs looking for that first win under new head coach Kyle Boer. First quarter, DeKalb's Tegan Irk. Watch this, back of the end zone to Logan Schultz Montoya for the touchdown. Take another look at it as uh, Logan Schultz Montoya mosses him. That's a touchdown to make it 7-0 Barons. Now DeKalb driving here in the second quarter looking for another TD throw, but it's Kamari Clopton coming up with the pick for the man in purple and gold. A nice return as well. That helps save a score perhaps for that New Haven defense. Still in the second quarter, Malik Farrow finds his way into the end zone. That knocks it at seven all. This one goes to overtime, and it's New Haven beating the Cal 13 to 10. ACAC play, kick it off at Fred Park Field. Defending conference champ South Adams at Bluffton. Starfires ranked number one in 1A, but hit by some major injuries last week. First quarter action, fourth and goal for South Adams, but Bluffton hits the stop to keep South Adams out of the end zone. Turnover on down. South Adams, though, looking good here. Owen Warner to Trey Shock. He's electric. 7-0, South Adams in the lead. Now, Bluffton's Lucas Hunt has filled in nicely at quarterback this season since becoming the starter. He hits Chase Gibson. That's 53 yards on the touchdown strike, and we're knotted at seven. But back comes Warner. Owen Warner looking for who else but Mr. Shock. And this is how you throw the deep ball. 60 yards on the touch, and South Adams opens conference play with the win, 42-32 against Bluffton. Out in Monroeville, both Woodland and Heritage looking for their first dub of the season. Start of the third quarter, you got Heritage and Casey Coltman's club in the lead 16-0, but Woodland battling back. Jacob Snyder, the QB, gets in. It's a nine-yard touchdown, and it's just a 16-7 Heritage game at that point. Heritage running the ball well in this one against that Woodland defense. Eric Rogers Jr. finds a seam and finds himself inside the 10. Later on the drive, why not give it to Rogers Jr. again? Good idea. Five-yard touchdown run there, and Heritage gets a win over Woodland, 37-13. In the Northeast Corner Conference, Garrett may be the team to beat in the big division coming into this year. The Railroad is 2-0, hosting Churubusco, I should say, coming into this game. Second quarter, Garrett's Aiden Lytle. Keeping the ball, and he's down right around the four. Bus go up, though, seven to six. Later on the drive, the handoff to Robert Koski, and Koski finds the end zone. He's got a nose for it. Garrett now up 12 to seven. Chura Busco coming the other way. Riley Burroff got some good experience last year. He's down right near the goal line, almost got in as he goes airborne. Later on the drive, you'll see Burroff take it in for a touchdown. Busco takes the lead there. They really don't look back as Busco wins this one 42 to 19 over the big train. Up in Butler, Eastside coming off that dramatic win over Adam Central last week. The Blazers ranked seventh in the two-way state poll. They were hosting West Noble. Second quarter, Laban Davis looking for a wide open Carson Jacobs behind the defense. And it's 35 to 3 Blazers at the half. Now West Noble. Trying to make something happen. They do it with defense here. It's Peter Bradley with the scoop and Peter Bradley with the score. This touchdown makes it 35 to 10. But Laban Davis would find Kyler Bibby and Bibby with a beauty. 
Great catch from Kyler Bibby as Eastside takes care of business 48-13 over the Chargers. Angola stepping out of conference play. The Hornets hosting the Chelsea Bulldogs out of Michigan. First quarter action, Chelsea showing some impressive defensive skills here. It's Jason Spolizel with the interception and the return. 7-0 Chelsea Bulldogs. Tyler Caldo coming the other way, finding Lane King. That's a first down. And then it's Tyler Call calling his own number. The quarterback for the Hornets would score on this play to make it a 7-7 ball game. Unfortunately for the Hornets, Chelsea too much tonight. 42-14 Angola falls in this one. The Warsaw won the Northern Lakes Conference Championship last season. The Tigers looking to defend their title opening conference play this year with Plymouth. First quarter, well, couldn't get off to a much better start if you're a Warsaw fan. Julius Jones from 46 yards out down the sideline and Jay Squared has a touchdown. Warsaw up seven zip. Now special teams, a big part of this game. Later in the first, the bad snap there on the punt. It goes for a safety, so Warsaw now up 9-0. With Bart Curtis in charge, you know they're going to ground and pound. Germont Flores Ortega with a short touchdown there to make it 18-0, 16-0, excuse me. And then off the bad snap again, Warsaw's Kyle Schnackenberg with a little snack in the end zone. He recovers for a touchdown. Warsaw led 29-0 as the Tigers take care of Plymouth. 43 to 13. Final stop, Wawasee at Northridge. The Warriors coming in 0-2. The Raiders coming in 2-0. Second quarter, nice run here by Northridge, but you're going to see the ball pop out. However, good news for Northridge. It's recovered by Tyler Gordon. And why is it good news? Well, very next play, Micah Hostetler to Jethro Hostetler. That's a 33-yard connection. Made it 35-0 Northridge as Northridge takes care of Wawasee in this one. 42-0. Stay tuned. Your gem of the night is coming your way next on The Zone. We're the North Zone Boys. Hey, stay tuned for the Highlight Zone. Gem of the night is coming up. Yeah! It's week three of the season. And you stayed for a good reason. We finished it off right. Hey, if you love hard-hitting defense, last Friday you were indeed in luck. Eastside's Dakota Reed and the Blazers stopping Adam Central's two-point conversion attempt in the final two minutes to seal a 21-19 win for the Blazers. Would defense reign again or would an offensive jewel take the crown? We're about to find out as we present you with your week three Jeff of the Night, courtesy of Peter Franklin Jewelers. And yeah, we got to go back out to Homestead for this one. 13 seconds remaining in the game when the go-ahead game-winning score comes from Sir Hale. Sir, yes, sir. 13 ticks to go, and that made it 45-42. That would be your final as Lewis stays unbeaten in the SAC. Whew, they look pretty good to win a game like that on the road. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night. Next week's games, Homestead at Bishop Dwinger. You got Concordia at Bishop Lures. New Haven at Leo, East Side at Churubusco, while Warsaw takes on Mishawaka. We'll have those games and much, much more next Friday on the Highlight Zone. For Colton, I'm Glenn. We'll see you then.